Hey, Daily Dosers, this is Pastor Larry here, and uh, we're taking a little time this week uh, under this umbrella of Now What? And I want to share for to you a little bit about what it means to me and how that impacts me. You know, sometimes we have what uh, I would call a deist God. If you remember that concept, it's the idea that there's a God that created this universe like a clockmaker. He made it, he wound it up, and now he stepped away, as opposed to a God that's involved day to day in our lives and in this universe. Of course, when we have a God who's involved day to day and in this universe, we suddenly have all these questions about why is there evil? Why does he allow this and that? And those are questions that we've answered in many other settings. The short, simple, cliff note version of it is if there is going to be freedom in this fallen world, then bad people are going to be allowed to do bad things. And good people are sometimes going to be caught in the backwash of it. But that's not really what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the realization that Easter is real history, not religious history. Matthew and his account as an eyewitness of all of these things said this when they went to the tomb and the angels were there and they said, he is not here, he has risen. Just as he said, come and see the place where he lay. Now, what if we really get that? What if we fully understand that he has risen? Well, it might not sound hyper-spiritual, but I want to tell you, for me, uh, there are a ton of times where that changes the way I behave and what I do, because it's one thing for me to know what God wants me to do. It's another thing for me to have the Holy Spirit from the inside out prompting me to do the right thing, but still tempted by that over there. But it's a whole other thing when I realize that I have a living Lord who knows and watches everything I ever do. You know, once in a while I'm in a setting and somebody will realize I'm a pastor and maybe they just swore or whatever it would be and then they'll turn around and they'll go, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot, as if my presence is supposed to change their language. And I'm thinking, why in the world are you worried about my presence? Like, do you realize God is actually hearing what you're saying right now? Do you realize God is actually watching what you're doing right now? Do you realize God is aware of what's going on in your brain? And, and there have been so many times in my life, I, I mean, it probably happens every couple of weeks, to be honest and be real with you, that there's something I'm about to say, something I'm about to do that makes total sense in my flesh. And I have this little conscience. The Holy Spirit recalls a scripture or a concept or just even sometimes that generic truth that's written on the hearts of all mankind about morality. And I'll be struggling with it, to be honest with you. And then I realize, now this isn't a report that he's going to get on his desk tomorrow. Like he's right here. He knows right now. And a living Lord is so amazing in the sense of his awareness of all of my troubles and my trials and the help that he gives. But I wanted to focus today on just this one little thing with my actions, my words, and my deeds. Are you really aware that he is alive and well. Not that he arose, but that he is living. I think that changes everything. I jokingly often say everybody lives better when their mother's watching. And I think we all do. Everybody lives better when they're in a glass house. And we always do. And I think we live more as God is calling us to live when we're aware. He's alive and well. Yeah, he knows, he sees, and he hears. Are you living like that?